Hey, ka, hey, ka, hey, ka, hi, everybody. I hope you're all having a good day. I hope you're all smiling and enjoying your lovely day. In this following tutorial, I'm going to be showing you on how to set up custom animations for non-humanoid bones or even some material animations for your avatar. Now, this tutorial is for more advanced users, and I'll do my best to explain it even for beginners, but just know for a fact that before attempting this tutorial, I will say first and foremost you need to know about the Wadado SDK and how to install it so make sure to check out that tutorial. You also need to have prior knowledge on how to set up a Wadado avatar file so if you don't know how to set one up then please check out the tutorials in the description below it explains how to do that but otherwise though once you have that knowledge I also will kind of assume that you have some slight knowledge on how to use Unity and especially the Unity animator which I'll try my best to explain for beginners, but do keep in mind that if you do feel a little overwhelmed at the information I give regarding the Unity Animator, I leave in the description below a written documentation about what the heck the Unity Animator is and some information about it. So if you do feel a little overwhelmed, there's some resources there. But otherwise though, I'll try my very best to explain this as best as I can. So the benefit of utilizing the Unity Animator for Wadado is that you could do things like having very specific animations for, let's say, you know, let's say for example, I want to have it where my wings are flapping up and down for happiness. Like if I press the joy expression, I want my wings to flap up and down with happiness. Or maybe I want to have like a toggle where my hair color will be a sparkly purple hair or something like that because of a custom shader or anything like that. Or even let's say texture swaps where if I want to swap out the texture of my character, you know, via material swaps, then you can do that. You can pretty much, you know, you utilize this for more advanced animation stuff. Now, there are some ways you could do some, you know, animations kind of in Wadudo, like idle animation at best, or the ear blink or wing blinks using Pendulum. But that will be for a different tutorial for more simple users, but this is more for advanced users. So before we continue our of course, you need to make sure to have this plugin, the Animator Parameter Setter nodes, to be installed. So you can go to the Discovery tab, go to Plugins, look up Animator, and you can find it's from Feline. This is a must-have, and I recommend everyone have this, this plugin here because this allows you to have those crazy animations set up and all that. It's a must-have. So once you do have this subscribed, you can then be able to go into Unity. And as you can see, I already have my my mod set up. So you can click on Wadabido New Mod, set up your mods there. And you can have your avatar already set up. This is the VRM version of my model for demonstration purposes. So I'll do my best again to explain the whole animation stuff here. But what we are going to do, first and foremost, is we are going... To, of course if you don't see let's say the animation tab here let's say you don't see at all you can simply right click on the console here click on add tab and add an animation tab here and I also recommend having the animator which you can access it by clicking on window animation animator so you can have this animator tab here this is going to be important for later so what we're gonna do is we're gonna start creating some animations I'm going to create some example animations now because I don't have ears, I don't have a tail, I'm not a cat girl, I have wings, and Tess Chan doesn't have cat ears or anything like that, I will use my model to demonstrate as best as possible, so try and apply your knowledge. If you don't know how to apply your knowledge, I will leave a video on how applying knowledge works, but otherwise, what you're going to do is just kind of like take what I'm explaining and you're just going to apply it to your own situation if that makes sense so just keep that in mind so you know let's just pretty much pretend like if you have cat ears pretend that my wings are the cat ears if you have like a tail or something you can just pretend that my wings are tails or something like that you know depending on what you what you're doing but what we're gonna do is we're gonna right click create a new folder and we're gonna name this folder animations and we're going to create some animations with my model. Now, you can just listen and, you know, you can just listen and just kind of watch for while I, you know, do this. But I'm going to create 
the animation. So, you know, click create. You can create whatever you want in terms of animation. I'm going to click on the animations folder. So for demonstration, I'm going to make, let's say, a breathing animation via blend shapes and my wing movement. So we'll have an idle animation for that. I'll, again, there is a way you can have breathing in Wadado by clicking your character, going to animation, and there's a breathing animation there. But this is more for like, if you want things like your wings having like an idle in a specific way or something like that. So I'll be showing that. Wings flapping. So if you want to have it where your ears wiggle or your tail moving back and forth, you can do that. I'll have wings up, so if you want to have a stationary pose for your ears, wings, tails, whatever the heck, that's how you can do that. And then we're going to have hair color. So we'll have hair color, but then for the sake of it being a material blend shape, we need to make sure to have one where there is no hair color, which is going to be, or the default hair color. So make sure for any material for the material blend shapes, right, or uh, not material blend shape, material toggles, my bad, that you'll have an animation for the default hair color and then one with, like, you know, the change of thing, uh, the change of the hair color. Or if, let's say, you're doing a face shadow, right, this will be, like, default face and then this will be face shadow or blush or something like that, you know. Just have one that's default and then one that is, you know, the toggle. So what we're going to do now is that we're going to animate each and every one of these. And I'll show you how to do that. So what we're going to do is we're going to set up the breathing. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the red button here to enable animation. So this will auto animate. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on my model here. I'm going to click on the blend shape little arrow here. And I'm going to scroll down and this is how you can animate blend shapes. I'm going to scroll down until I can find the breathing. So I'm going to make sure that frame one, you know, the first frame will, or the first, you know, zero seconds, it'll have the blend shape at zero. Then at around, let's say, one second, it will be, you know, 100%. And then at two, it's going to be zero. So once I press on play, it should be able to have it where the blend shape is able to move like so. For the bones, you can, of course, do the same thing. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the arrow here. You know, all that stuff. Let's see. I'm just going to pretty much go through my arrows until I find whatever is matching to what I want to animate now. I'll quickly say this. If you're kind of having a, a hard time, you know, it's taking too long for you to go through these little arrows. You can press on Alt and click on the arrow button to kind of see the list much faster. But just know you're going to see more bones if you do that, depending on the model. But I will say this, because this is something that happens a lot, and it's always a common mistake. But you can't add, you cannot animate physics. You just can't. So for my case, I have these spring bones here. But this applies to dynamic bones, magic of cloth, whatever physics. So... You can't, let's say for example you have a tail, right? And let's say the entire tail has physics. You can't animate that tail until you have like a controller bone. So for my wings here, right? The fourth bone of my wing chain right here, from here all the way down, this has physics. Meaning I can't animate these bones, otherwise it's not going to work. And, you know, I can even show you actually. So let's say if I do wing flapping, just just quick demonstration real quickly so I just do that right so gonna do that and if I go to play mode here real quickly and I go here to scene I go up here click on optimize and then I click on the flapping here and if I were to move the frames or click on the play it's not gonna move the physics see it's not gonna animate because you can't animate physics so keep that in mind that if it has a spring bone or dynamic bone or magical class, whatever the heck that physics is, you can't animate it. So make sure that for my case, I can have these guys have physics so it can do some flapping movement. But this one here, because this one has this bone here has no physics, this can be my controller bone. So I can do like the wing flapping or the ear wiggle or tail as long as there is that one parent you know that one parent controller bone that can allow that movement without 
you know, having the physics. So no physics, physics. So keep that in mind. So for this case, I'm going to go into the breathing. I'm going to press on the red button again, and I'm going to go ahead on this frame here, and I'm just going to rotate my wing upward and pretty much just, you know, pose it here real quickly, like so. Then I'm going to copy this over here, click and drag, control C, and then I can do control V over here. So that way, when I do the breathing idle, it's able to move my wings up and down like so. Now, I'm going to then do the wings flapping. Same concept, pretty much. So you can have like, an, like a middle frame where the wings can be down or your ears can be down or something like that. And you can have it so, let's see, so we're going to make, let's say, 30 seconds. This will be where the ears or the wings are down. And then on one second, it could have it where the wings are back up or ears are back up. Or, again, for a tail wag, you can have it where the first frame will be where your tail is in the center. 30 seconds could be where it's on the left side then right side and then back to the center and it just kind of loops depending on how you want it so as you can see i can be able to do my wing flapping like so and once i have that then i can have a stationary pose for my wings so if i'm shocked or anything like that i can make it so my wings are upward so i'm gonna go ahead and do that find the left wing here Set this to a negative value like this and you don't have to if it's going to be a stationary pose you don't have to animate the rest you could just have it as one frame so that's kind of it so you're good on that now for the material toggles these little heckers here this one what we're going to need right now this really depends on what the heck you're doing so you're gonna have to apply your knowledge whether it's like doing like a texture swap a material swap or you know changing a setting and stuff so you're gonna have to apply your knowledge to it and maybe do some experimenting but what you are gonna do right so what you're going to do for this case let's say i want to change my hair color to be purple again you're gonna have to apply your knowledge but this is like a scenario so what we're gonna do is i'm gonna go into my projects i'm gonna go into my material folder and i've already had this set up here the purple hair but what you can do is you can select whatever material you want to do a toggle with so let's say my hair i want it to be default brown but then swap over to let's say a purple hair or even for my outfit let's say i want my outfit to be purple or something like that you know so what you can do is you can do control D so that way you can be able to duplicate the material and then you can be able you know with this material you can have it you know change the settings however you want or even change the shader to completely something else if you want so I can have it like let's say I switch between tune shader and realistic shader if you really want that you know you can you can literally do that if you really want but for my case I'm gonna have it where my hair was is gonna turn purple as a toggle so we're gonna have that so I'm gonna go ahead and remove that one and I already have the setup so what we're going to do is that on the animation tab for hair color we're gonna have it where the red is active and what we're going to do is you can either a click and drag the material to your model and it will override it as the animation or if you're struggling to import, you know, click and drag the material to your model, what you can do is click on your mesh right here. Then you're going to go to your material list right here, as you can see here, and then just replace the material on that list like this. Click and drag like so. Now, if you don't want to do, let's say, like a full like material swap like this, but you only want to change like only like one setting from like your pre-existing settings or something like that you can of course you know animate the individual settings all here if you want to do that but I'm just gonna do what I just did and make my hair change purple but you can of course do this this is especially nice if you want to have let's say like a dissolve animation going on or fire animation with your shader you could do that crazy stuff if you want so but either way we're gonna have this as hair color 
And then as for default hair color, I'm going to make sure that this is set up by simply just making sure that I, you know, I can actually just delete this material and then re-add my default material back just to kind of force it to register. So, you know, just, just in case, you don't really have to do this depending on your, how your setup is with the animator, but I'm just doing this to be better safe than sorry. That, but also I had some recording issues from other bloopers. So, either way, <clears throat> now we should be able to have all our animations set up here, as you can see. So, what we need to do now is we need to set them up as, you know, in the Unity animator, so that way, once we port this model over, into Wadido, we can be able to do the triggers that we want, which is going to be really awesome. Now, bear with me because the animator can be a bit overwhelming. I'll try my best to keep this as simple as possible so it makes sense, but of course there's more things you can do with the animator that can be into more insane settings, but again, I'm going to try and keep this simple as possible. So, no overcomplication, but if you want it to be overcomplicated, you can do that on your own terms. So. In the animator here we have the layers now the base layer i tend to usually leave this empty just you know just in case so you know we have our animation stuff here so you know instead of just deleting and stuff what we're going to actually do is i'm going to click on the plus button here and i'm going to go ahead and make the individual layers for our animation stuff you know keeping it simple again there's more information about the animator that can be better for optimization and other stuff like that but just to keep it simple I'm gonna do this so we're gonna have it where we have breathing we can have a hair color layer we're gonna have wings up and then we're gonna have wings flapping like that make sure that each of these layers the weight is set to one so that way you can be able to trigger it so keep that in mind and then what you're going to then do, so if you're going to have, if you have a breathing animation, you can simply just copy and paste it to your breathing layer, like so. But for these cases here, let, let's say you're doing some toggling, you're going to have to set up an empty state. And by empty state, I'm referring to like the default little node, if that makes sense. So I'm going to right click, click create state and empty. This little hecker here is going to be like our default, if that makes sense. So keep that in mind. And you'll have to apply this for you know each of these toggles here. So create state, make sure it's empty for each and every one of these, like so. I'm gonna go ahead and you know copy these over here, but you can also, by the way, let's say if you did happen to delete it or something like that, you can always add it by simply just clicking and dragging from your animation folder and click and drag from flapping, and you can be able to do it like that so I'm gonna actually delete all these little heckers here and I can simply just go to let's say hair color let's say I not do that I'm gonna delete the state and I'm gonna have it where there's default hair color and then hair color like that so I can click and drag so I accidentally copied it to the wrong layer my bad but you get the point you can be able to you can be able to like click and drag your animations here and stuff so that's really nice so give me some time to quickly set this up so we have wings flapping here with our default state then default state with wings up and then hair color you know our material toggle from default to hair color and then breathing is fine the way it is like that now you can of course rename these states so that way it makes sense to you. It's definitely really important because if you're going to have a lot of animations, you definitely want to make sure to properly name them so that way you don't get really confused. So I'll say wings default and then I'll have this set so the state is no flapping like that. So like this, that, default, just like that. So we're on track right now and you can of course test the idle animation now if you want by simply pressing on the play you know the play button right here and going to your scene 
and you can see that the idle animation is working perfectly fine. So remember, we're going to be able to test out all these animations in Unity, meaning that if something doesn't work properly in Unity, it's not going to work properly in Wadado. So keep that in mind, because again, Wadado is a Unity, it's a Unity program. So if it doesn't work in Unity, ain't going to work in Wadado. So what we're going to do now is we are going to then, since we have these little hackers set up, we're going to then set up our parameters. Now these parameters, this can be a little bit overwhelming, especially with the fact we have something called float, integer, and bool. Now, pretty much in a nutshell, this is pretty much how you can control like how things can be triggered. So boolean takes care of true and false stuff. Integer is has a big range, like from zero to I believe. 255 is probably the max range of integer, but correct me if I'm wrong, I can't 100% confirm that. But pretty much there's that, and then float is between, I believe, 0 or negative 1, negative 1 to 0 to 1, positive 1 if that makes sense. So all I can really say is that, you know, depending on what you want, to, you know, how you want something to trigger, you can utilize these. Now, most of the time, I actually just use integer just to kind of keep things, like, simple for me, I guess, because I'm, like, a simple person when it comes to my setup. But otherwise, if you're a more advanced user, you can use what you want. Now, you you know, on the anime setter nodes, you can't use a trigger from what I've seen, I think. But if you happen to need a trigger, by any chance, you can contact Feline if there is no trigger for the nodes. But either way, we're going to make... We're going to make three different parameters. We're going to say one will be wings flapping. We'll have another integer for hair color. And then another integer for wings up. So what we're going to do now is that let's start off with the hair color, the material toggle. So what we're going to do is we're going to right click on the default. So whatever is the orange here, the default, make a transition over to hair color and then make another transition back like that. Now this little arrow here, make sure to click on has exit time. Make sure that is removed because you want it to transition into without exiting. This here will be our exit because it's going to exit back to default state. So what you're going to do with the arrow here, you're going to click on it and click on the plus button and then make sure that you have the correct parameter set up. So for this case, we want hair color and we have these settings. So let's say for our case, we want it where if the number is equal to one, it will be able to trigger the hair color to be active. So if let's say, so here in the parameter here if this is if this box has a number one then it will trigger this but if we click on this click on the plus if the hair color is not equal to one then it will have it so it transitions back and we can be able to test this to make sure you know if it's done properly by clicking on the plus you know or the play button here and I'm going to go ahead and go to scene. I'm going to click and drag the animator over here. So that way I can be able to see my scene in the animator at the same time for debugging. So what I'm going to then do is that on hair color, I'm going to set this value to 1. And it should be able to have it where it makes my hair turn purple. But if I put it back to 0, it's going to turn my hair back to normal. So that's pretty much how you can do the material toggle. Hopefully you followed along with that. Again, you can do the same effect with floats or boolean depending on what you want. But again, I'm just going to use integer just to keep it simple for my brain cells. So that's how you can do the material toggle one. And you can apply your knowledge as well for wings flapping. So for this case, for wings flapping, I'm going to do the same thing. Click on, right click on the orange, make a transition, then make a transition back like that. Then I'm going to have it where this will have no exit time and then i'm going to add a condition so wings flapping if it's equal to one then it'll do the thing but otherwise if it's wings flapping and it's not equal to one it won't trigger it 
Another thing you can, of course, do if you want to have like sort of an exit time, you can adjust these settings. So here, you can change the settings here to like if you want to have a little slower or more instant. So if exit time is set to zero, it's going to be completely instant. But if the exit time has like a higher number, it can make it a little slower to kind of like, you know, go back to default state. So nice for like transition related stuff, you know. You can mess with the settings however you want, but, you know, all I can... Actually, this is going to be the transition duration, and then this will be, like, how long will it take for it to go back here. My bad. Just want to make sure that's corrected. This is just... Yeah. So, this is... If you want to make it, like, smoother in transition to exit, you can increase this value or decrease. And then exit time, it's like, do you want it to be instant, or after, like, two seconds, then it'll, you know, go back here or something like that. So... Either way, I'm going to now test this one out as well. So, going to go and press play. And making sure that the wings flapping, it does work. So, I'm going to press on 1. And as you can see, it does the wing animation like it should. And then I put it to 0. And it goes back to normal. I'm going to do the same thing with, last but not least, the freaking wings up. The stationary pose. Same thing. Like I mentioned, really quick, add your condition, wings up equals one, and then this one will be set to wings up not equal to one. And double making sure if, you know, for this arrow here, the one that's going from default to transition to the toggle, make sure exit time is not, you know, not checked here. So that way it doesn't do weird stuff. So, double checking these. Exit time is disabled for this one, but this one has exit time. And then, once again, I'm going to press on play on Unity. Then I'm going to go again into scene. Wings up parameter. Set the wings up to be 1. And then set this to be 0. Like so. So, of course, I'll even mention this as well. By default, it you know, the layer will be set to override. So as you saw what happens there, my wings, they don't, you know, when they go up, they're not doing like the breathing. If you happen to probably want something to blend with each other, you could set the blending to be additive. But I will say just be mindful about it. So as you can see, like when, you know, the wings are able to move up, but they still breathe. So if you want to, if something is supposed to mix, then you can set the layer to be additive. But otherwise, if it's not supposed to mix, then make sure it's set to override instead. But again, you, you know, depending on what you're doing, you may get some silly results. So just be mindful about that. But otherwise, for the most part, that's pretty much how you can utilize the animator just to make things easier for you. Haha. <laughs> and yeah, that's pretty much in a nutshell, you know, how you can set up the animator here. And that's pretty much also how you can create animations from scratch. Now, all we have to do is make sure that when we click on our avatar, make sure that, you know, if it's VRM or FBX regardless, the animator has this controller when you export the model. Because if this controller is not on the model, it's not going to be able to export with those animations. So make sure this controller is registered. And then what you can do is that for my case I will have to I'm gonna duplicate the model just in case I'm gonna then click on Wadudo set up character set up selected game object and then make sure I have an update prefab here and then finally what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into my mod settings here I can set up to you know I can set up my stuff here profile and all that and mod directory, I've explained in my Wadido avatar tutorial how to do this. I'm going to put that to characters, like so. And then simply, I'm just going to go to Wadido. I'm going to then build the mod, save it, give it some time to process. And then once it's finished, then we're going to be able to set it up the animations in the nodes. This is where the animator node plugin comes to play. So once you finish exporting your model, you're going to then go to your character, main properties, you're going to change the source to 
whatever the new model is. So as you can see, the idle animation should now properly work as you can see because my, my now my wings are flapping. But now we need to make sure that the toggles are working. So we're going to have to go into our blueprints like I mentioned earlier, make sure that the animated parameter setter nodes are subscribed. Go into your blueprints. I'm going to make a new blueprint here. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do on keystroke here. So on keystroke pressed. I'm going to set this to one for demonstration purposes. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to have, let's say, a flip flop node so I can toggle it. So I'm going to connect these together, flip flop. And then I'm going to type in int like that. So set animator integer like that. Now this is going to be me changing the pretty much the hair color. So keep this in mind. So we're going to go ahead and connect these little hackers together. So here we're going to have it where, you know, when we press it once, it's going to have number one, but then this will be setting it to zero. We'll make sure that the animated asset is of course the character. Now do keep in mind that the animator integer parameter, you need to make sure it's the same exact one that is here. So make sure it is the exact spelling you know capitalization everything so make sure you have your unity project open in case you forget what the parameters name is so copy this name and then you can of course paste it here so that way you know you can tell water though hey i want it to change the hair color not change my wings or something like that and then once you press one you should be able to have it where your hair can turn different and if you press it again it will toggle it back on so i can literally do this voila and then i can do the same thing for if i do control drag and then control c and then control v to duplicate it and i set this to number two then i can set the same thing let's say to wing wings flapping copy and paste that over let me double check to make sure that's working wings yes with an s then I'm going to have it where if I press number two, the wings will actually be flapping. And then if I press it again, it'll be set to zero. And then of course, control C, control V, set this to three instead. And then I'm going to say wings up, copy and paste that there, then set that to number three. And then as you can see, my wings are up and you can of course bind this as well to let's say you know for an expression or something like that if you want but you know again it really depends on you know how you want to set up and all that like you can have like a condition and all that so let me do a quick time skip now this is pretty much for more advanced users so i do apologize if this node looks freaking scary but allow me to explain what the frick this node is so pretty much what this is saying is that if the character expression is active like let's say i am scared then i have a now you don't have to have the boolean or unless you are gonna have multiple expressions share the same animation like this one here so you don't need to use boolean or unless you're gonna have to share some animations like multiple expressions sharing one animation but for this case you can have it where it's set to scared or joy or something like that you can connect this to the condition of if branch so pretty much if i want to quickly show you this in a more simplified way for example i can do this and then let's say is character expression active so you can pretty much do it like this set it to character joy like that so this is kind of like in a nutshell of what you can do but again there's the advanced setup there but this is like if you want to have it where if the you know when you're having a certain expression it will toggle the animation on or off so if the expression is true then i can be able to have let's say my wings flapping but otherwise if the if the expression is not active then it will turn off the animation this is kind of to replicate how you can do the vsf avatar animation stuff but for wadudo which again is all node based so if i show you right now i do a joy expression you can see that my wings are flapping 
But if I turn it off, then it does that. And I can be able to do this sort of thing where I can be able to toggle between my expression, but ensure that the wings don't freak out or anything like that. So, yeah. So that's pretty much, you know, in a nutshell, how you can do the whole, like, animation binding to the expression itself if you're curious. But otherwise, though, that's pretty much the tutorial on how you can do the crazy, insane animation stuff that I do. And I hope that that... You know, you learned a lot from what I do, and I hope it helps you out on your Wadido journey. Again, what I showed you is just the basics. There is so much more that you can, of course, do with your setup, so be mindful about that. You can do so much more crazy stuff with the animation, so I look forward to seeing what you guys create. Of course, join the Wadido Discord server if you need further assistance, especially because this thing is probably, like, you know, again, it's more advanced stuff. You probably need some assistance, so join the Wadido Discord server. Me and other peeps. Even the, um, even also the dev is there as well. So if you need further assistance, we're all there to help you out. But either way, though, I hope you guys have a lovely day. And I'll see you guys next time, okay? Bye-bye! Thank you to all my Snowflake members. In case you don't know, I have YouTube membership. So if you want to further support this channel and what I do, then feel free to join the Snowflake members. Otherwise, though, just your support means so much to me, and I appreciate every ounce of it. Either way, though, with that being said, though, hey, 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 goodbye, bye, everyone. I hope to see you guys next time, okay? Bye, bye.